Anonymous Bicyclist here. Today I'm going to describe how to uh, safely install a twin legged center mounted kickstand on a touring bike. Um, I'll, take, I'll go ahead and take it apart now. You can see how, it, how it, um, you know, the kickstand's holding up the bike, of course. I'd like to explain how the, uh, the bracket works uh, in comparison to. Um, to uh, the typical brackets that come with these with these uh, kickstands, this one happens to be made in Switzerland. Um, see what it looks like down, folded up, um, and the bracket that comes with this really puts a lot of compression on the uh, on the chain stays, and they don't recommend putting it uh, uh, as a kickstand on one of these touring bikes. However, if you're like me. Um, and you insist on having a kickstand on a touring bike, you're going to figure out a way to do it. I figured this way out, this way works. Uh, I've had this kickstand on the bike for uh, three years. There's no damage to the chain stays. Um, I use this fully, fully loaded touring and also I commute with it about 2,000 miles a year. So right now the bike has around 7,000 miles on it and the kickstand's been on it almost from day one. Um, so let me go ahead and take this apart and I'll show you the pieces and I will describe to you how I made and show you how I made the pieces to uh, for the mount uh, for the kickstand and also to explain to you uh, why it won't damage your chain stays. So I can take it apart. All right, so I've, um, I've taken my mounting bracket off the bike um, kickstand. What I like to show you is um, these pieces are made out of polycarbonate. Uh, this top piece, which I'll call a top plate, is quarter inch polycarbonate. Um, and this spacer piece is four pieces of glued up polycarbonate. The shape is determined by the shape of the interior between the chain stays on your bike thickness of the spacer is determined from the depth of the stays on the bike uh, and we'll, we'll take care of all that when we make a template. However, um, just to describe how this works, the top plate sits on top of the stays. The spacer, because of its shape, uh, limits the amount of travel the uh, the kickstand can go in any direction once it's tightened up. And then there's a gasket that goes uh, between the kickstand and the spacer. And the gasket sits right on the bottom of the stay. When pressure is exerted where my thumb is and my forefinger is with the bolt, the kickstand's down here. When pressure is exerted there, this piece because of the friction created with this gasket here in the top plate and I placed the gasket here because um, I'm, I'm always afraid any kind of debris that gets in there is just going to wear off the powder coat on the bike. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so in any event, the, the friction that is created between these two pieces keeps that kickstand virtually unmovable. When I say virtually, it is going to move just a little bit, but that's, you know, to me, that's not a problem. You know, I wanted a kickstand on here, and but I didn't want to damage the stays. So, um, the way this is, no matter how much I tighten up that bolt, it never really increases any pressure on, on, the, on the stays themselves because the um, the gasket will always compress slightly more, slightly more, slightly more, and the rubber's always, and the, the, uh, the polycarbonate's always uh, has less tensile strength than the steel, so they're going to crush and or crack or break before the steel does. Um, and uh, as an example, you can see there's a slight, hope you can see there's a slight crack in that top plate from uh, just using the kickstand over and over and over again. This is the second top plate that I've actually put on this bike. Um, but top plates are easy to replace, chain stays, eh, not so much. Okay, let me, uh, let me go over here and I'll kind of try to describe to you um, what I'm talking about here. All right, so we have our stays 
and we have our spacer. The spacer is slightly thinner than the stays. The space be that makes up the difference between this distance and the, the slight um, variance in the spacer thickness is a piece of rubber gasket. It's a rubber gasket. All right, With that rubber gasket sitting underneath the stays between the, um, the stays and the actual um, kickstand, it allows for um, the compression to occur in this area right here where the bolt is. When the compression occurs there and not here, then you don't get this crushing action here. The friction again is what holds this whole unit together. And you know, the bike companies suggest that you don't put a double uh, a double legged kickstand or any kickstand in that on a bike that isn't specifically made to have a kickstand. A lot of these uh, touring bikes they, they tell you don't don't put it on. And I'll and I'll and I'll show you a reason. Here's a, a stay from an old bike that a friend had. Let's see if I can't zoom in on that. And um, if you look on the stays, you can actually see uh, the difference in the circumference or you know the the circular shape. This one's rather this is pretty circular. This one has been crushed a little bit. And um, what happens is uh, kid put a kickstand on there and tighten it up. Kickstand loosened up again, tighten it up. Kickstand loosens up, tightens it up. He's tightening it up because he thinks the bolt is getting loose. The bolt's not getting loose. The stays are getting compressed. Okay, a uh, couple of things first. We need to know what the distance of this stay is as far as the depth of it. So we're going to take an adjustable wrench or an adjustable spanner if you're in Britain. Um, if you're in the British Isles over there. Um, I'm just going to clamp it on so it moves but not real easily. Okay, so that's that's our, our what we call a poor man's caliper. Um, we're going to go over here and we're just going to measure where, yeah, there we go. We're going to measure, um, so we're coming out a little bit bigger than an inch, so an inch, it looks like an inch and a 32nd to me. So, let's just write that down. While we are at it, let's, we're going to need to drill a hole through the top plate and the spacer. We need to know what the, the, the bolt is, so again, I'm taking a, a different uh, adjustable wrench. We just get it on there so it's kind of tight. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and measure that. And that's a 3 8 inch bolt. So 3 8 inch bolt, 3 8 inches, oh, 3 8 So what we want is uh, 7 16 as our bolt, you know. A little bit bigger than that would be better too, but not smaller. Do not want to have to force uh, thread this all the way through all that contraption before you get to the kickstand. Uh, I have a piece of manila folder here. I'm going to take the manila folder and I'm going to line it up against this little piece, this brace here that they have between the uh, the chain stays. Okay, so that basically this surface is uh, parallel with that. Just gives us a point of reference. That's all. Uh, and then holding kind of tight on it, we're going to mark all this and, you know, roughly here because all that, all this is going to do is give us a, the ability to cut out a template. And, yeah, there's nothing fancy about this. You know, you may end up having to do it several times. I don't know. Okay, so as we check this, then as we check this, I can see that it's it's hanging up a little bit, and I don't really like the way this angle is, so I'm gonna cut it back a little bit, and it's still. It's still too long, it's touching here, but this is the side that I'm more concerned about. So I'm going to try to look at it, try to get the, the fore and aft um, kind of parallel. 
And again, it's just a little wee bit tight. Kind of look at it. It fits in there. It moves around a little bit, and that's what you want. Okay. Mark as to where. And, you know, it's stupid anyways because it's in the center. Um, so we are going to notch that out. But in any event, that's our template. Let's see what we're going to do with this. We've got our two numbers here. Okay, I've taken a uh, template and I've drawn it on on graph paper just so I have a center line down the actual spacer block. That's the shape of it. Sp spacer block is going to determine what the top uh, plate looks like. Top plate hangs over half an inch. Take your, uh, your scale, ruler, whatever, measure over half an inch, measure it parallel to that line. Not like this, like that and then just strike um, two lines. So that determines now what our top plate will look like. It will be four and aft, exactly the same length of the spacer block uh, minus that cutout for the, for the derailleur cable, right? So what we'll do is we'll cut these two out and let me go and show you uh, the next step. Okay, so we've got the template for our um, our spacer block right here, and also for the top plate, all cut out on graph paper. We're going to glue those onto our material shortly. So um, you can see this is made out of multiple pieces of polycarbonate glued together, cut out to the shape with the hole drilled in the center, and of course the three holes that uh, hold the top plate from twisting. Um, we're going to use for that is uh, polycarbonate sheets. Uh, you can get this at a big box store or whatever. They have plastic on them and uh, I mean a plastic sheet on it to uh, protect it because it's normally used as uh, you know see-through glass. But what we're going to do is we're going to scratch the surface for each side. We're going to glue them. Gonna scratch the surface of that. Scratch the surface of that. We're going to glue it. Gonna scratch the surface of that scratch the surface of that, we're going to glue it. And that's going to form our piece. All right, I'm making this all a little bit bigger. You don't need anything quite this size. If you have the right tools, you could probably make it really close to the size it's going to be in the end. However, for, um, for instructional purposes, I've made them slightly bigger so that we can use some hand tools as far as making this. Uh, and then we'll need an additional piece, of course, for the top plate. Now, this is what, these are the adjustable wrench that I measured the chain stays with. And it's still set at exactly the depth of the chain stays. Now you notice that it is slightly, and maybe you can't notice, well, if I go like that you can notice. Um, this piece is slightly smaller than the chain stays. And we want it that way because we want to make up the difference with a piece of compressible material that's larger than this. Okay, so in my case, <clears throat> I've acquired some um, some rubber gasket material, and that just makes it. Now, dependent on what your stay with this, this I don't know. Um, you may need to end up using five pieces. You may end up needing to use um, four and another piece of, this is quarter inch uh, poly. You may use four of these and an eighth inch piece of poly or any combination of which to gain this distance. So you're better off finding out what this distance is and then dividing it in quarters, eighths, whatever you need to do. And of course trying to find uh, some type of rubber gasket. You can get this at a lot of auto stores and um, and uh, machine shops, whatever. Um, you could also use uh, leather. Um, you can use um, inner inner tube material, you know, uh, and just keep gluing it together. Right. Just when you glue it together, make sure you sand this crap down really good so that the glue adheres. Um, and make sure you got it thick enough. Thicker is better. Not thick enough is going to put the pressure on the chain stays. Okay, let's glue this up and we'll go to the next step. Okay, <clears throat> this is our poly. 
and I've just used some really rough grade sandpaper and just, you know, just sanded the crap out of it willy-nilly. I mean, all, all over it, all the corners, everything. The most important part is going to be in the center, but, you know, you, you want to really scratch the stuff up, right? And you want to do both sides. I mean, you want to do the side that you're, both sides that are going to be glued together. That's what I mean. Okay. Um, <clears throat> after you got it all scuffed up, take a rag and some, denat some denatured alcohol, alcohol, uh, ac maybe ac acetone. You just be careful with all of this stuff. It's highly flammable. Okay. So I've got two sub, I'll call them sub-assemblies here. Um, each one is uh, two pieces of essentially four by four pieces of polycarbonate. And uh, they've been glued together. They still have the protective sheet on here, uh, just because I'm OCD that way. And um, they've been glued up, sprayed, just follow the directions, you know, um, like you're doing an inner tube, wait for the glue to, to set up. Yeah, that's set up. Okay, so when you have the two sub assemblies again, you're going to sand, clean off with denatured, put your uh, your adhesive on there, your spray adhesive, and put them together. Take yourself a clamp, clamp the crap out of them. I've got uh, all four pieces glued up. I struck a line down the center of my four inch block and I've lined my template up with that line for my top plate so that when the two of them are on top of each other they, they line up. Okay, great. Hopefully you can see this. It doesn't appear that I can really show it well. However, what I'm doing is this, this uh, this back line of the, uh, the template I am lining up by looking directly down and lining this center line up and I'm folding it so it's just the center line that's going to touch. I'm looking at the center and I'm playing kind of wiggling it around until I have both those planes lined up. Okay. Now look at them. Pray that it's okay. Yes. Okay, so now we see. We have our um, our um, spacer block and our top block. Now we can machine through both of them at the same time before we actually uh, cut out the pieces themselves. Now before we do that, <clears throat> this piece when you cut it, depending on what you use, how well you've made your template, may need to be sanded down. You may need to use a sander, a belt sander, or a file or something like that, but if you use any kind of mechanical device that uh, operates at a really high speed, it's going to warm this material up uh, pretty good. The material's not going to suffer, but that glue may come unbonded. So I'm going to show you a trick uh, to keep these together. Just the event you have to machine this piece um, to get like uh, in, in the case of this one, I actually had to use a belt sander, and when they started to come apart, I needed to uh, to get them back together and stay together. You know, especially if you're on a road or something, and you need to do something, and then all of a sudden they fall apart, and you're just oh, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. Okay, we're going to show you how to uh, how to resolve that issue. Bind these together. Um, it's a plain box of irregular number uh, four finish nails. We're going to drill some holes, we're going to drive finish nails in there, we're going to cut them off, we're going to tap the ends so they become like rivets. So what I've done is with a hammer, the edge of a hammer, and a piece of steel on my vise, I've taken uh, these finish nails and I've just tapped them until they almost have like a threaded appearance to them. But really what I've done is I've kind of flattened them out and made them oblong. So now when they go through the hole, they will be slightly bigger on one or two, on two sides than the hole themselves. They'll be uh, they'll actually grab on to all four pieces that it goes through. We'll cut them, and then uh, when we tap the ends down to rivet them, everything's going to be fine. Okay, so let's just do that.
using your drill on high speed and plumb to the surface. We take our uh, our nails and you can see now now they go in much tighter pretty machinable uh, material. Okay let's go on. We're gonna go ahead and cut these off using a pair of what, the wire cutter on a pair of needle nose pliers. Um, this is going to let them sit just proud of the surface and uh, then what I'll do is I'll go over there on the metal and keeping this backed up on a piece of steel I'll whack this down. This is going to deform the nail and hold everything tight. I could see that was the top of the finished nails all kind of riveted down. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to line this up the looking over it again straight down our center line and uh, it all looks fairly good. I'm going to go back here to three quarters of an inch. This is quarter inch grid so three quarters of an inch that's going to place my hole for my kickstand right there gives me you know plenty of room around it. We want to drill for the mounting bolt right now so again with our board to protect our bench line up that center line really good okay the thing I have in it struck as you can see right through the stuff we used our poor man's caliper to measure our bolt came up three eighths we need to go slightly bigger do it on the shank you can see this this is slightly bigger than that so if we again use this as a caliper to figure out that's actually seven, seven sixteenths uh, we could see that the bolt is bigger we need to go up to that but we do not want to start with that if you start with that and this comes undone and this starts to spin this is will be like a lawnmower blade so what we're going to do is we're going to step drill the hole. We're going to start with a small drill bit. Okay, so <clears throat> we got one there. We'll just grab another one that's slightly bigger. And just let the bit rise the bit up once in a while and clear it out. I step drilled this about um, I don't know, four times or something. Now I'm down. I'm up. I'm at three eighths now. You see, that's the size of the bolt. It's not going to want to go in there. Uh, you might want to go at a slow speed, holding the drill close to your body, tight up above it. Let the drill do the work, but you're going to be pulling up on it. This thing's going to want to fly down through the material. See. Perfect. Next, I'm going to drill the holes through here to put these mounting screws in the, in the top plate. I'm using a machine screw here. You could probably use a wood screw. But uh, if you look down the screw, the way I am, if you picture my face right up above here, I can see just a little bit of this bit behind this. I can see the edges of the threads hanging over. However, one way to check to make sure that the, the plate here is going to accept the threads. Just take a piece of scrap material, drill a hole through it. Take your screw with, uh, you know, um, you could do this by hand or with a, another battery drill, just giving it some force. Okay. You know that you threaded that in. That's, that's a threaded connection. Okay. No problem. So we know we've got the right size drill bit for here. Start with a small one, go up three, four times, whatever it takes you to find that perfect hole. Okay, so, but for now, let's just drill through here. Now we've got these roots, so now with the screws that'll hold that together. But you want these 
not to screw into this top. You want them to fall through the top just like that. Does. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill these holes so that these screws just drop right through. They will be threaded into here. And while we've got the camera running, let's just do that now. Get them down there, kind of, not when they touch. If, they, if the head touches and it starts to back off, it's just going to strip your strip, strip your threads off. A little 530 seconds. It's going to take 530 seconds. And we're going to drill these. Make sure I got the right piece. And remember, when you're drilling this and you're just holding it, Make sure that you know what you're doing, um, because if it slips, don't come crying to me. Okay, so we'll see now. They fit right through. You want to countersink these, and if you use a round head screw, a screw that's flat on the bottom and rounded on the top, you won't have to. Any countersink works. Now we've got our holes countersunk. You see, so now the, the screws are relatively flush. Let me check that one there. Yeah, flush, flush, flush. Okay, let's go to the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top plate first. Turn on the bandsaw. Got our piece. Let's go put it together. All right, so you should have a spacer block. And a top plate. You got our gasket material here. What you're gonna do is just draw this out. You don't need this little tab. What you're gonna end up having is a piece of gasket like that. You'll see I have a piece of inner tube glued on there because I need just a little bit more um, space to make up the difference under mine. Again, chain stays are going to be different, so you're going to have to cut one of those out. Uh, also, you're going to have to uh, cut something like that out, right? Actually, I'll figure it out. There we go. Something like that out. Um, you'd have to find the center of this hole when it's like that. Bummer. Okay, anyways, uh, draw around it on the edge where the center line of the hole is. It happens to be right where that casting mark is, uh, probably by no accident. And then the center of this hole is right at that line there. Just mark it. When you have your lines marked here, look, go like that, go like that, connect the dots, and you'll find your center. You need to cut a hole in this kind of gasket. What I do, and don't try to drill it because it won't work. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Take a uh, small, small chisel and uh, just uh, octagon, like a stop sign. Go around it. Uh, I think you see like bada, like bada. Okay. Okay, good. All right, now we're going to put it on the bike and make sure that all our um, all our tolerances are right. If uh, if I need a little bit more inner tube for uh, to make up some space in the gaskets, then that's what I'll do. But let's just put it on the bike. We have our our um, our bracket that we made, you know. One addition, 
I did glue some um, some inner tube to that so your uh, so the powder coat so now you can see this it doesn't move and it moves very very little so any kind of friction that we uh, we established here between the, the bolt and the uh, in the bottom of the kickstand that's going to really hold it tight and you may get a little bit of uh, play back and forth like this but you know nothing that I've ever been concerned about so and of course there's always the uh, the uh, the thought that you know you come up with something better uh, using part of this idea or saying oh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in which case uh, that's okay too uh, this was made for me and I had a friend who told me gee you should make a video on that okay here we go one video coming up okay so we've got our gasket on there from uh, issues of that in the past sometimes these gaskets as you're trying to move around especially if they're catching it all will start to move around on you and uh, so before you tighten everything up just make sure that they're in the right position you try to hold them with your thumb trying to find that hole can be a little and you've got to get it where it's you know the bolt and the hole are lined up so a little bit of jiggle here and there will definitely help okay so now the bolt is the bolt is hooked up one gasket is way off got to check the other one okay yep the other one's okay the other one sits in between its chain stays right beneath that uh, spacer block so that one that one's okay um, so let me tighten this up but just in case I'll hold my finger there and okay all right all right, hold on a minute and we'll throw this up on the bench and we'll see how it uh, all looks. Okay, well, um, there's your new kickstand mount. Now, um, there's a couple of other things that I, that I like about this. Uh, you can pull the board here and lift the bike up, put it up on the board, and you need to. Um, adjust your derailleur or anything like that your your rear wheels right off uh, right off the ground um, yeah it, it comes in handy you know especially um, especially when you're when you're sore and you're fully loaded you got your panniers on there one of the big problems I had with uh, panniers especially even with my handlebar bag on the top is um, front wheel <clears throat> tends to just flip back one way or the other, and then the whole bike goes over with the, the kickstand, of course, in its, in its uh, upright position, in which case you end up cracking that bracket. Um, the last time I cracked it, I believe it was because of that. So what I've done is I've taken a little bungee cord here, and I bungeed it to my, uh, my fender and my bottom uh, water bottle cage here, and so the front wheel doesn't move. And when it doesn't move, I can have, uh, you know, my panniers in the front have around 10 pounds on each side. The handlebar bag's about eight pounds. You know, occasionally I'll have something here, you know, a, you know, a seat or something like that, you know, a little camp seat. And then the back, the back of the bike, again, is carrying about an additional 20 or 30 pounds. So that's a fully loaded touring bike. And it basically will not, uh, will not fall over. As long as it's on a, you know, a stable, a stable surface and uh, a level ground and everything. So, um, you know, if uh, if you end up liking this video and um, you want me to make more, hey, give me a shout. Uh, write something in the comments, uh, positive or negative, man. I can handle it. I can take it. All right. Uh, thanks again for watching.